Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to continue talking about ClickFunnels 2.0. In particular, today we are going to talk about setting up your style guide. Now, that's a cool thing about ClickFunnels 2.0 is you can set up this style guide ahead of time. You can set up different colors and fonts and borders and buttons and all that ahead of time. And then when you get into the editor, you just have to go click, click, click because you're going to have three choices of buttons, three choices of other things and you just click on which one you want it automatically puts it in there automatically puts in the colors the shadows the backgrounds the whole thing and sets it up for you and uh, it takes a little bit of work up front and I strongly suggest you do it before you build your site uh, but it does take a little work up front but it is more than worth it in the payoff on the back end and once you do a couple they're really simple to set up so the easiest way from the home page here, we're just going to go into settings and we're going to click on styles. And in this case here, if you're just starting out in 2.0, you're going to have, I think it's this default theme right here, but we're going to create a completely new style at this point. And we're just going to call this our demo test style. And we are going to create that style sheet. And so now we got our demo test style. We can come over here, we can edit it, which just changes its name. You can clone it, or we can customize this. And cloning is a good thing too. So you got two sites that are gonna be very similar, let's say. You're building, a, you got your hub that you built, and then you got a funnel maybe, and you only wanna make a few changes. So you clone it, make the few changes, and you're good to go. When you land on this page here, it shows you everything you currently have set up. So all of your different fonts, all the different colors that you have in here, and then also what your shadows, your borders, and your buttons are currently set to look like. And so now we can come in here to our fonts, and we can say, okay, what do we want our base font to be? And, and if you watch my video on what is a rem, uh, this comes in very important and very handy in that what you wanna do is this here is what is setting what is known as your root font size, and this will affect the multiplier that is your rems, and you'll see that here in a second. So what my suggestion is, is that you always set this to 10, uh, the root font size in ClickFunnels 1.0 was set to 10, and so my suggestion would be to set this one to 10. And then also, let's go back here. You could go either desktop or mobile, and I saw that it had flipped over to mobile, I guess, because I was changing the font size for the mobile. And now we can come in here and we say, for our headline elements, you've got basically three main text elements, your headline, your subheadline, and your content, which is your paragraph element. And we can open this up and we can say, okay, for all of our headline elements, what font do we want that to be or to at least to default to? And in this case, it was set to pop-ins, but let's set ours to, let's just, I mean, they have everything in here. Obviously, you can scroll through all of this right here. You can also search by uh, whether it's a sans serif font, a serif font, a display font, um, all these different fonts you can click on in here. But let's just say we want our main headline element to be uh, Merryweather. So we're gonna make that Merryweather. And then the question is, is what font weight do you want your Merryweather to have? In this case here, we have four font weights available. But if we go to, let me see, we'll go click on that. If we go to Montserrat, here we should have all nine font weights available to us. So for our example here, let's just use our, our Montserrat here and we will set this to bold. And again, for font weights, it's font weight of 100, 200, 300, 400, all the way up to 900, if you want to try to remember it that way, or you can remember the names as well. So in this case here, we're gonna set that to bold. And then you can set your letter spacing. Generally speaking, you're gonna leave that at zero. And then if you want a headline or something to look a little bit different, a little, little closer together, a little further apart, I would suggest you do that with each individual headline unless you have a specific reason to set it otherwise. And the same thing with the line height, again, based upon how the lines are put together in the funnel or the blog or wherever, you may want to change your line height a little bit as well. But now, as you recall, we set our font over here to 10 and 10. So when we come in here to our 
um, into our font settings itself, we can see right now this is now 32 pixels. Let's say we realistically want all of our font headlines, we figure we're going to start them all at about 30, uh, let's just say 36 pixels. So we'd put in 30, whoops, let me try this again. I should be able to just type in 36. There we go. And now you see here the rem turned to 3.6 because our root font was set to 10 and it's 10 times 3.6 is 36 or 36 divided by 10 is 3.6 rem rem is just a multiplier that's why i say set it to 10 because it's easiest to remember so when you see something as rem and it says it's 5.4 rem you know immediately that's 54 pixels so that's the easiest way to remember that and so you set all of your font sizes for your headline and then you all, I'm sorry, for your desktop up here. And then down here at the bottom, you do the exact same thing for your mobile. And then we can go back out of here and we can set this now our subheadline element. So let's just say we want our subheadline element now to be, we had a, let me see, we had Montserrat on the first one, wherever that was. So that's a sans serif. Uh, so now let's we say we want a serif for our or other and now let's do our merry weather for that and so we got our four weights here of merry weather we say regular on this one and again it's the same thing as before we could say we want our largest or our starting size to be 24 and you set all the rest of them for both desktop and mobile and again if you want to really set the letter spacing and the line height you can and then of course the exact same thing for our content font or for our paragraph font and in my case here I probably want the font to be the same uh, for the subheadlines and the paragraph so I'm going to make those both Merriweather and then again uh, we'll say here we want this to be 14 and then you would set all the rest of them accordingly whether you want large or extra large or whatever size and then of course you're also going to set your font weight I would say probably most of the time for your paragraph and your subheadline, just set that to regular and then set your um, headline, par uh, headline element to bold. And that way it's a good place to start because, again, once we get into the page itself, you can always override all of those settings. Now we're just going to click on update and it will save all of our font information. And now we can go back to the style guide. Now the next thing we're going to set up is we're going to set up our colors. And in order to do that, I just opened up a tool. It's called coolors.com, or .co, I guess it is, coolors.co. And you can just keep hitting your space bar, and it'll keep changing colors. Or you could put in a particular color and then tell it to calculate uh, another um, whole set of colors based upon the one you put in there. And I'm not a, much of an expert on colors, so I just figured this was the simplest way for me, me to do this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, let's go back over here. And we had here our colors. And so let's open this back up. And you're going to have these different colors. And these are the background. The colors you see over here represent the backgrounds of these right here here and so what we're going to do is we're going to say our lightest background what colors do we want to use for the different things in our lightest background well the first thing i want to do is i want to set two colors in here to start off with i want to set a black color so let's just make this very last one right here we can make that one black and then i want to set a white color as well so we'll set the last two here as black and white and then what we want to say is on this lightest one here, we want to give that a white background. So we're just going to come there, click on that, and we're going to click on here. And now it has a white background. And you could also set an overlay at this point if you so chose. But then we also want to say here is what color do we want our headlines to be. In our case here, we're going to make that black. And we're going to make our subheadline black. And we're going to make our content black as well. Again, you can change this on the fly as you go along. And the same thing with our link colors, our icon, and our bullets. We're going to make those all black at this time. So now we're going to back out of here. And now we're going to go over to our coolers. And we're going to start grabbing the colors out of there. So we're just going to come over here, click on that. We're going to copy it. 
We're going to come back over here. We are going to paste this in and we're just going to do this very quickly just to put some colors in here. Again, of course, you're going to put in your colors based upon your theme, based upon your client, based upon uh, the product you're selling, all those kind of things. You're going to have to come up with that. But again, um, tools like Coolors and plenty of other ones on the interwebs will help you to put together a color palette if you're like me and you're not much when it comes to coloration on stuff. So let's just do that. We'll put that in there. So we have those five colors. We have our black, we have our white, and then we have this blue color, which is just kind of a leftover color. But let's just say we want to create another color as an accent and we'll just put in this dark red color that I use quite often. So we have that in there now. And again, hopefully with time, they'll give you the ability to put more colors into your palette and or when you're putting colors into stuff, like in 1.0, they had a lot more where it kept like the colors you'd used in the past. Hopefully they'll start doing that with 2.0. But now what you had here is you had our lightest section here. So our lightest background, we made all the fonts and everything in there black. Well, now let's say the next one here, our light background, we're going to say, okay, we want it to be that next color up. And again, in this case here, I think we're just going to stick with our, our blacks for the colors on the text for all of these. And again, you can change it on the fly or you can make it anything you want. I just think that at this stage right here, setting up the colors of the bullets, points, and all that, um, I don't know if that's really going to be effective or not over time. And so we'll just keep doing this, get this all filled in here really quickly. Because then once we go into a new page, we're going to just be able to say, okay, I want to create this background. Um, I want to create this section. I want to give it this background. Let me see here. We got one, two. We should be up to this green one now, I think. And we'll just keep making these all black here. And then let me see. We got to go back here. Still a little bit confused on where I got to go on this sometimes. And so now we got our darkest background. Now here again, I mean, obviously we got uh, extra colors to play with and deal with and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, maybe this dark background here, instead of that being that green color, I don't think I like that so much. So let's change that out and let's go with this color right here. And then we can come back and you see how easy that is to change. And the thing is, is once you build out a bunch of sections and then you go, you know, I don't like the dark. I don't like that background color on those dark sections. You just come back in here, click, click, and you change it. You can come back in, you change the color itself if you need to. So you come up here, you click on this, you change the actual color and boom, it uh, does it all automatically for you across any one of the funnels or pages or blog posts or anything that you are using this style guide on because the style guide can be used on in multiple places or you could just use it on one singular page if you wanted to and so now we got our darkest background here and in this case here we're going to go here with our darkest background but here we're going to go with our white color instead and i'm looking at the dark section above this and we should probably put white in there as well so we're going to go back up to that one. We're going to come in here to our dark. And here we are going to put in some white. And we will do that. And we'll get this done. And then the next thing we can do is we can move on. So here is what all of our color combinations look like right now. Of course, again, you can make the text and everything any color you would like. So let's update this. And now let's see what is the next item up for bids here is our shadows. So here you have three pretty basic shadows. You got your one, two, three across the top here. So you got one, two, and three, and you can change it as you see here, it changed. You can make an inset or an outset. So you can make the shadow go to the inside if you wanted to, or you can make it go to the outside. The X and Y directions here, you can move it so it goes all the way to the left and it goes all the way to the right. And in fact, let me do this. Let me, that's at 12%. Let me increase this um, so we can see this a little bit better. 
And um, so if we go now to over here, see it goes all the way over to the right. So it's in your X axis, it goes all the way to the right. And then it goes all the way to the left. And I'm pretty sure my hand's going the opposite direction of where it should be. So now if we bring this back to zero, and then we can go Y direction as well. So Y positive goes down, Y negative, we'll put it up to the top like that. And so you can put it anywhere in between. And again, this was set at zero. And I think for the most part, I mean, you know, if you've got some specific shadowing that you like to do in a certain way or whatever, yeah, definitely put that in here. Otherwise, you might just kind of want to leave it alone for at least your first go at this. And then uh, <clears throat> over time, you'll find the shadows that you like, and then you can start building them into your templates. Because again, that's the nice thing is you're going along and you say, oh, that shadow I've been using, that number three shadow, I didn't like that. I want to make that bigger. I want to make that beefier. Okay, you just come back in here, you change it, and it changes it on all the funnels simultaneously. Think of it as a uni this is universal settings right here is what this really is. And then we got our blur here at 90. So if we do less blur, you can see it tightens it up. And almost here, when it gets to that point, it actually basically turns it into a border at that point and so we got that down to zero and now if we got spread it makes it a really big border so this is kind of a way to put a border around something if you really wanted to and didn't want to use a border for some reason so we can take that back down that was at four and the blur was at 90 so we'll put that back there and then this one here we'll just type it in this was at 12 percent and so again, each one is different. You can set them up any way you would like. Actually, looks like one and three in here are identical to each other. Maybe uh, slightly, no, it even has the same, even has the same opacity on it. So either way, you can play around with that. So let's update this. And we'll go back to our style guide. And now we have borders. Exact same thing as the last one you saw. You got your border one, your border two, your border three right there. You can make them dotted or you can make them dashed or the opposite way around from what I just said there. Most of the time, you're going to leave it as a dash, even though you may not. Obviously, you can change the color if you would like. Let me just copy this out of here before I move this. So we can make it this purple color. You can make it green. You can make it any color you would like in there and then the stroke is the width of it so they have this set to six but you can make this anything you would like but we will set it back to six and i think that's the way it started unless i messed this all up um but so then again you got two more you can mess with here different colors different sizes things like that and again of course everything can be overwritten as you're moving along and then you have buttons as well. You got button one, button two, and button three, and all the settings on it. So again, we can change our background color. And again, I guess I did not show this to you on these others, but let's, uh, let's go to border and let's click on our color. You're going to see that same palette we originally set up. So here we go. We're going to put in our our green color here, kind of our medium background color. We could put that in here as a border. And the same thing with the buttons. Let me see in shadow. Yeah, in the shadows, you can do the same thing as well. So you can make it kind of this dark reddish color, or you can make your shadow green or whatever other colors these are right here. And then we can do the same thing with our buttons. So let's come in here. Let's say we want to make this button green to match that same coloration of the green background. Maybe you've got some green highlights you're going to put in there. Maybe you're going to put in some green um, divider elements. There's some green in your logo. Uh, you know, anything like that. You're making a green product of some sort. And then you can also come in here and you can pick your fonts. In this case here, let's use this custom font that I uploaded, which you can and upload custom fonts into ClickFunnels, and then you can just pick them straight away from the list right here. So we're going to put in that custom font. We're going to choose our font weight, and let's just say we want it to be whatever. Now, in this case here, this font doesn't have, it has like basically two font weights. So you can either have, you know, regular or bold font. So let's just leave it on the bolder side. And of course, we can change 
the font size on this. You can change it also then for mobile. And as soon as you touch anything on the mobile, it always kicks you into, it always kicks you into mobile view. So just be aware of that and you can change it back up here. So now we are out of mobile view. Again, we can set our letter spacing, our line height. Again, I would do that mostly on the fly as you're building it out. You can change the font color so let's say again we're going to take one of our pre-existing colors and that looks absolutely hideous so let me see do i have anything that doesn't look horrible no nah, not really uh but let's leave it there anyway and so let me see that was the uh that was the font color right there you got your casing that you can change on here whether it's uppercase lowercase whatever but that font did not uh, change because it can't let's just use this one here so we go um, all lowercase all uppercase or capitalize the first letter like you normally would you could underline strike through line above line below i'm not really sure why that one's in there and at any time if you want to turn something off you just come over here and you'll see where this turned blue and it says clear clear the formatting i can just click on that and it turned off the formatting had there been any turned on in that case then we got our primary text shadow as you can see right now there's a bit of a text shadow around here and so we can make our text shadow move to the right, move to the left, like we had seen earlier with the shadows themselves. And then we also have our offset here, top to bottom. Uh, so you got your X offset and you got your Y offset. And then again, we have our blur on this. And of course, if you don't want any shadow on here at all, you can just click that and turn it right off. And that little part, uh, just closes right up. So now we have our subtext so over here. You see we got some subtext and again You get to pick your your font right there You get to let's just put in some pop-ins font You get to pick the weight of that font and you get to pick the size of it for mobile and desktop and 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 let's just make this one Let's make that now white text there and then again we have our um our text shadow that we can put on there as well. And in this case here, we can just also turn the text shadow completely off. Then we can also put a border around our buttons. I mean, I'm telling you, ClickFunnels has got everything in here now. So we got our border around there. And again, here we can pick one of the colors that we're already using. So let's use this more brownish color here or a darker, well, it's, maybe it's a green, it shows green up here. And then we will, um, we can make that a little bit bigger. That's probably a little too much. Let's just say we want it three. And then we can put some um, some border radius is what they actually call that here in ClickFunnels. They call it corners, but it's, uh, it's really known as border radius. And so we can uh, put that, we can make it as big as we want. So we can come in here and we can basically make a pill-sized, uh, pill-shaped button by just pulling this over to the point where it stops moving, where the the curve stops getting bigger and then you're good to go or you can actually come in here and you can change it by side or per side so let's say we wanted our top left to be square then we could just pull that over and our top left would be square the other ones would all be rounded and then let's just say also our bottom right we wanted square and that really looks silly so let's move this back out here so that it's like that i don't know if that looks any good or not but let me see here maybe now nah, that didn't look very good either uh but let's just leave it at that so you get the idea and the only thing i'm really missing here that i would like to see and maybe I thought there was a setting on this. Maybe it's per element as you put it in. But the yeah, it is. In fact, it is um, the amount of uh, padding you're going to have on the sides of it. Because in this case here, it'd be really nice to get some more width on that, get some more padding on that thing. But I'm pretty sure you can set that once you are inside of the editor. And then we have an actual shadow of the button itself. So we have, again, let's just... Uh, we're gonna, you know, our X and Y direction here, and then uh, we're going to have our blur. That just, you know, how far does it go out as far as a shadow realistically? And then spread is always more of a function of, especially if you set the blur to zero, its spread is basically how big is it gonna be? So spread really sets how big it's going to be, and then the blur, takes that and makes it fuzzy and then spreads it out even 
further. So we'll just set that back to the way it was. And I'm not going to save this anyway. And of course, again, we can then pick any one of our colors or, you know, choose any other color you want. You can put in this blue color if you really wanted to. And you can set the opacity on all of these as well. At any point here, any color, you can always choose from the, the color picker here. And you can set the opacity on everything as well. So I'm going to discard those changes because they were all pretty bad. Uh, but now, did I lose all of my colors? No, okay, all my colors are here. And let me go back here. And... Um, so not where I wanted to go. So let's go back into there. Because when you came into that first page there, I was thinking here, it should be showing me all of my different colors and everything. And apparently it is not doing that right now. Let me see if these stuck in here. No, they did not stick in here. So let me pause for a second and let me fix that up. Okay, that's kind of fixed up. It's not exactly like I did it the first time, but what had happened is I had more than one of the style guides open at the same time and I clicked on the wrong tab. So be very careful about that because when you go in and out of these things, although it has the name up here at the top, if you're not paying attention, you're going to go in there and you're going to overwrite all your work. And what I probably did now because I was working in a different style guide that is actually attached to a live site. I know I went in there and I messed up all those colors in there. So as soon as I'm done filming, I'm gonna have to go in and fix that up as well. And here I have, okay, I think this is actually the, the original style guide that I had made. So I'm going to kill this tab. I'm gonna click on update here and hopefully this will work. So this point here, let's let this update here real quickly. And now we're gonna go back out of here and it's gonna take us back to our main page and we can come up to our second tab here, sites and funnels. And now in this case here, well, first off, if you are uh, working on your workspace, which again, I'm always gonna to say to people, think of workspace as a WordPress blog. You have one workspace, you have one blog. You might have a whole bunch of different funnels. All those different funnels may have different domains, but your workspace is your blog. You're going to have pages inside of that blog, and you are going to have posts inside of that blog. Okay, so here is the home page of my blog. And what we're going to do in order to set the style guide for the blog, we're going to click on here and we are going to uh, go to site settings and we're going to scroll down in here. And here we got our style and you can drop this down. You can pick all of your styles. I have mine set here already, so I'm not going to change that at all. And we will discard those changes. And then you're going to do that for every single page, every single post that you create. So let's just go in here and we're going to go to a page and let's just create a new page. And we're going to start this page as a blank. You, of course, could take any one of the uh, pre-built templates that they have here and they all load up a little bit slowly, but they'll all come up here quickly in a moment where we're going to just start from scratch and we're going to say here we are going to call this our demo test page right there and it pre pops the name of the page or i should say the path of the page right there says it's available and then does right down here this is something brand new i just saw for the first time today now is index in the search engines and we're going to say actually in this case here we're going to say no because we don't want this, this is just a garbage page we're creating so now we're going to do that and now boom it takes us automatically into the editor now this point here we did not tell it which style guide we want to use so we're going to come over here and right down the side here are all the standalone pages i currently have and so we're going to come over here and we're going to click on edit the page it's going to open this up and right down here is where we can tell it which style guide we want to use the newest one will always be at the bottom of the list so we got our demo test style we'll click that there and then right here if you wanted to make this a site page so it was a site page that would be associated with your blog and will show up and when you are creating and working on your blog or your hub or your workspace whichever word you want to use to describe it you will check this here but that is for a different day so we're going to say here now we're going to update that page 
and now is going to rebuild the page for us. And now we are in here and we have that style guide associated with this page. So we're going to add a new section and we're going to say we want that to be a full page section. And what did it happen here is it made it this dark color. Well, why did it do that is because it defaulted to the lightest background. Now, in this case here, my lightest background should have been a white color, I thought. So let's go and check to see what happened here. So we're going to reclick on lightest color because from right here, we can say edit the theme section colors. And we're going to come in here. Okay, well, something got messed up here. And you know, I was having a little bit of trouble. So we're going to have to come back in here and we're going to fix this because I made some boo boos. And in fact, there's a lot of boo boos in here. In fact, let's go back out of our colors and we can come in here. But again, this is a great example of a make sure you're working in the right style guide when you're doing this, but also how you can just change things on the fly. So here we go, okay, I didn't like that lightest color on the background. I didn't like the uh, generic font colors that were in there. I mean, like these font colors here, I'm not digging on that. So now we're just gonna come back in here to our theme colors and we're gonna say, okay, we want them all to be this dark color. I don't know if this is still black or not because all the colors uh, got all messed up on me as you saw. But so now we're gonna make that all black and we're gonna go back here. We're gonna click on update. And now again, we have not left the editor itself. The style guide popped up over the top of it. We didn't have to go out somewhere and then come back in again. So all we got to do now here is click on this and boom, it changed everything right there and gave us that light background color. And then let's say we want to make some changes though anyway. And we're going to say here, okay, we're going to click on our background color and we can change the background color if we wanted to here to red. So this would override any other color that was in there, but let's just set that back to white. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could put a foreground in here if you wanted to. So we're just going to make this a little bit of a darker color. So there we go. We're putting a foreground color over the top of it. So that you would specially use that. You wouldn't necessarily do it one color over another, but certainly if you have a background image, you would definitely uh, sometimes want to put a foreground color over the top of it to kind of mask it. But we'll turn off the, the uh, background there. And then we also have borders, shadows, and corners. But let's go back up here and let's put in a couple of elements. So let's put in a two column row. And then let's just put in for simplicity's sake here, let's just put in an image. And we're going to click on this image and we're going to come in here. And of course, you can start positioning things. This isn't about the image uh, element at this time, but we could come in here. So we got border. Here we got border. So we got our three different borders that we can put in. Right now, if you got the three dots clicked, that will won't choose any of the three, but we could say, okay, here's our border number one, which didn't appear to be much, two, and then three. But now again, we can just go here and we're going to say, we're going to edit that style and we can come in here and we're going to say, okay, what color do we want? We want that dark burgundy color and we want this to be six pixels. And so now we will update that and then we will pop back out of here once it's done updating and okay there we go now you can do that so now it changed it right here and it will have changed it everywhere else you were using that style number one border but then you can also completely override the border if you want at any time and let's say all we want to do is we want to make it dashed in this case here we like the color we like the thickness but we want it dashed but no no actually we don't we want to have it be blue and then we want it to be even bigger than what it is. So anywhere along the way here, you can go into any element. Let's go into a headline element. And we can either use what we have set existing already. So again, we can edit our style right here. So our main headline element is 10. But okay, as I'm building my site, I realize that I'm almost all the time for my headline element, I'm almost all the time using uh, 56 for my pixels. Okay, so we just change that there. Now we can have it 56 as the default across the board for everything. And then if we bounce back out of here, now that should be, okay, did not, okay, what we can do, oh, I, I know what I did here. Let me just show you that to you again. We're gonna edit the style because all I changed was I changed the extra large font size. I didn't change anything else. 
So you can change the large, you can change the medium, all that kind of stuff can all be changed. And then when you come into the element itself, and we have waiting for it to save there, now when we come into the element, I have to click on extra large. See, now once I go to extra large, now it's going to make it that 56 pixels by picking it up again from the style guide. So we can edit the style guide or we can override the style guide. And again, here it is showing it in REMS, but it's 5.6 REM. And because we set the root font size to 10, we know that it, that is 56 pixels without having to go and turn on the pixels. And then, of course, we can change the font weight we can change everything else about it. We can change the mobile size, of course, and then everything else. So the, uh, the style guides realistically are your, your base. This is what I'm going to use 90% of the time, or this font size is going to be really close to what I think I'm going to need most of the time for my headline elements. So I'm going to set it to that. Same thing with background colors, borders, everything else. But then right here quickly on the fly, you can pick one if you want and or you can just override it and change it, modify it, put in anything you would like. So that is it for today. A quick tutorial on how to get your style guide set up and how to be able to work with it once you are in the editor. So if you got any questions, just let me know.